officer of Just Putting Around. I'm your host, Reese Williams, and today we're going to take a look at this upcoming Forbidden Door pay per view by AEW. Now, this year, they're like normal, they're hosting it with New Japan Pro Wrestling, but this year they're also introducing uh, World Wandering Stardom, or simply just Stardom, which is New Japan Pro Wrestling's. A sister promotion which mainly deals with uh, female wrestlers as well as uh, CML, CMLL out of Mexico which is a uh, quite a nice quite a nice change the more the merrier it will introduce uh, the American crowds to stardom and uh, Mexico well not just the American crowds but fans around the world now on the first match that they've they got here, we got Swerve Strickland with uh, versus Will Ospreay in an AEW World Championship match. Now, Will Ospreay is the current uh, AEW International Champion after defeating Roderick Strong at, at Double or Nothing uh, in uh, May. Uh, but yeah, this has been a this last week on Rampage on the on Dynamite. They was it became real personal with Stuart, with Swerve uh, mentioning uh, Will Ospreay's child in up in their promo, in their uh, face off, which uh, really set uh, Will Ospreay off, which is probably the best thing that AEW's done for a while. I mean, Swerve Strickland. That pro, that the face off was probably the best part of that whole uh, rampage, uh, dynamite last week, because in I those parts that's why I kind of zoned out. But yeah, that was that that promo was top notch on both parts, and having Prince Nana there to mediate it was a was a nice little touch. Uh, so I had to me. Because it's a champion, Mr. Champion, there's only one championship on the line, uh, which is uh, Swerve Strickland's. I see, I see Swerve handing Will Ospreay his first AEW defeat, which will, which will be a bit of a shame. But, it, but the way Swerve has been booked as a bit of a weak champion, defeating Will Ospreay would probably be a good thing for him. But yeah, that remains to be seen. Uh, so the next match we've got is a uh, ladder match for the vacant AW TNT Championship. Uh, Adam Copeland was the last TNT champion. Unfortunately, in his uh, barbed wire steel cage match against Malachi Black, uh, Adam Copeland ended up uh, breaking his ankle and requires time off. So, l- luckily enough, uh, they the the young bucks pulled their EVP card and stripped uh, stripped Copeland of the championship. Now, originally they were going to give the championship to Jack Perry, but uh, Christopher Christopher Daniels came out and said. Uh, after the Young Bucks had fired him the week prior, Daniels, uh, Danielson, Christopher Daniels came out and said, don't worry, you don't need to give me my severance pay. Uh, Tony Khan gave me the EVP spot so I can make the matches. And said that Jack Perry's not going to just get handed the championship. Instead, there's going to be the ladder match to determine who the new champion is going to be. At the moment, you got Konsuke Takeshita, Mark Briscoe, Jack Perry, Dante Martin, and Leo Rush, with one more spot to be decided, which I believe will be on uh, this week's Dynamite, which is airing today, which is the day it will be released, uh, Thursday, the 27th of June. Late, I'm going by um, Adelaide time, so 
Wednesday night in the US and we'll check your listings to see what time the dynamite starts and yeah, go from there. Third match on the card is a winner takes all match. You got Mercedes Monet versus Stephanie Racker, uh, who is from New Japan Pro Wrestling. Uh, so it's a winner takes all Mercedes Monet's TBS Championship versus Stephanie Racker's New Japan Strong Women's Championship. I believe this is a championship that Willow Nightingale won by defeating uh, Mercedes Monet uh, last year. That end up which ultimately injured Mercedes and left uh, left on the shelf uh, for months. Uh, Stephanie Vecker, I, I don't know much about her. All I know that she's wrestled that she wrestles in CMLL, CMLL, and in New Japan. Apparently, she's uh, also the CMLL World Women's Champion and the CMLL World Women's Tag Team Champion with Zuxus. Um, it's always a strong women's champion. Uh, she, she's from Chile, apparently. Uh, but yeah, uh, Mercedes Monet has come to has has gone to CMLL to to confront Stephanie Vacker. Uh, Zuxus has also come to AEW to face. Mercedes Monet, I believe Mercedes has gone to New to Stardom as well to to conf, confront Vacker. Uh, I could be wrong because I don't, I don't watch much New Japan, so I'm not 100 percent sure what goes on there. Um, but it, I I reckon this would be a decent match. Uh, I, I've got. Because I don't know much about uh, Stephanie Vecchio, I'm going to go with um, Mercedes Monet winning. Uh, just because, and they'll continue her feud with uh, Willow Nightingale. Next up, you got the AEW Women's World Championship. Timely, timeless St- Tony Storm defending her women, her championship against... Mina Shirakawa. Uh, Luth will be out there with Tony Storm, but Mariah May will be at ringside supporting both parties. Uh, for those who don't know, Mariah May and uh, Mi- Mina Shirakawa were tag team partners in in Mexico, not Mexico, in Japan, in a uh, stardom, I believe. Uh, so they, they, they were part of a stable in Stardom called the Club Venus, which was uh, Mira, Mina Shirakawa, um, Mariah May and Zaya Brookside. And they, they run rough shot in Stardom. But I, I, I sort of, I'm not too familiar with what else there is in their past, but the Mariah May Tony Storm thing has been pretty interesting. Uh, their 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 bond. Um, I've I've got timeless Tony Storm winning this match, and sometime between now and say all in. Oh, we all, all in the next pay per view. So, sometime between this pay per view and all in, I've got Mariah May turning on Timeless Tony Storm, possibly teaming with Mina Shirakawa, or maybe going with the, the Outsiders, maybe. I'm not too sure, but yeah, I'll. I'll I've got Mariah May facing Timeless Tony Storm at All In, given that it's in, it's at Wembley, and Mariah May is from London. So yeah, the, 
but that remains to be seen. Next up, we've got Zack Sabre Jr. and Orange Cassidy, uh, which should be a yeah, typical ZSJ match. I mean, ZSJ is rather a rather uh, technical wrestler. Orange Cassidy, his his gimmick works for him. You can pull out any move from anywhere. Uh, this match started from. Uh, from last year's uh, Forbidden Door, actually, uh, Cassidy won a fatal uh, four-man match, which also included uh, Zack Sabre Jr. Uh, and Dennis J wanted a rematch, uh, which he asked for on the June twenty-fifth, uh, the June eighth episode of Collision, uh, which Cassidy happily uh, accepted. Uh, so, yeah, I'll, I'll probably give ZSJ this match since uh, Orange Cassidy won the last one. And I know AEW don't really go for 50-50 booking like WWE does, but I reckon they might might do that for this match. Just, just because. So, yeah, ZSJ for the win here. Uh, next up, you got... Uh, John Moxley defending his IWGP World Heavyweight Championship against Tetsuya Naito. Uh, I'm not even sure how this match came about. Uh, uh, apparently, uh, so Tetsuya Naito was who John Moxley won the uh, IWGP Championship from, the World, the World Heavyweight Championship from. And Moxley came out on NJPW's Dominion and said he'll face anyone for the championship. And Naito came out and they asked for a rematch, uh, which is being granted for Forbidden Door. Uh, this will this will be a brawl just because John Moxley's John Moxley. I probably he's probably been busted open because I said his name a couple of times now. Just and that man and bleeding. I tell you what, he just loves to bleed. I've got no idea why he just bleeds. But I, I digress. Uh, this should be yeah, this should be this will be a brawl. Uh, Moxley loves a brawl. Not only from what I've seen, he likes to brawl. So yeah, this will be a this will be a real slobber knocker. Uh, I got John Moxley for the win, maybe. It will be a close one with yeah, Moxley just getting the edge, and maybe losing it at the next New Japan uh, show, which will be Fantastica Mania USA. Uh, on July 13th, uh, which is uh, a, th a cross promotion with uh, CMLL. Uh, now, the next match on the card is uh, MJF versus Hachisero. Now, he was from CMLL. Uh, this match... Oh, so, at double nothing, MJF returned after being... after uh, sort of, uh, being out with an injury that he sustained that uh, world's end. Uh, and since then... He's had a bit of a bit of a beef with the elite, and uh, Cage of Anic uh, Cage of Agony has been on the elite's side. So the Cage of, Cage of Agony being Cage of Agony being Brian Cage, Toa Leona, and Bishop Corn, uh, and they brought in Hachisero in to help help uh 
make make things a bit harder for MJF. It's, which seems to have worked. Uh, but so you, yeah, the, so the match was announced for for Forbidden Door between MJF and Hutchinson, which happens to be in uh, MJF's hometown. Uh, but you know. I haven't watched much of Hutch's serious stuff except for what's been on AEW TV. Uh, I'm gonna go with MJF winning. They seem to love having MJF win in his hometown. So yeah, I've got I've got uh, MJF winning. Next up is Brian Danielson versus Shingo Takagi in the uh, Owen Owen Hart Cup. Which is the uh, third match? Third match of this of the of the men's men's soccer bracket. Uh, and the winner of this match will go on to face Pack, uh, face Pack in the semi-finals, with Pack having beaten beaten Claudio Castagnoli. Uh, the other two matches that left in the quarterfinals is Ray Phoenix and J versus Jay White and Jeff Jarrett versus a wild card entrant. I've got no idea who the wild card entrant is going to be, but they'll be facing each other on this week's uh, Dynamite. Uh, this is also Brian Danielson's swan song year. He's retiring from full time. Uh, Full time performing because he wants to he wants to spend more time at home with his kids and wife. Uh, as for why Hikaru, uh, this fellow is in it, uh, Shingo Takaji. Uh, uh, yeah, just the don't know. They they wanted to add a. New Japan into it. So. Now I have Brian Danielson winning this match. It should be a, it should be a good match. Uh, again I don't know much about this uh, Shingo uh, Takaji. So I don't know what his actual style was like. But it should be. Given that uh, uh, Danielson's a very technical wrestler. He likes to control the pace. I have. Yeah, yeah I reckon this should be a good uh, ground uh, ground and pound map based kind of kind of match. Uh, with Danielson, Danielson's my pick to win win it all. All his make it to the finals. Whether he wins the whole thing, I've got no idea. But it'll be good to see him go make it to the finals. And the last match announced uh, for the show is. The Learning Tree, which is the uh, Learning Tree, Chris Jericho, the Redwood, Big Bill, and the Bad Apple, Brian Keith, versus Small Joe, Hook, and Katsuyori Shibata. Uh, I'm, I got look. I'm, I'm gonna give credit to Chris Jericho for being able to reinvent himself to try his best to keep himself relevant, but unfortunately, Chris Jericho isn't Billy Gunn when it comes to his in-ring work. Billy Gunn has been has been able to keep himself being able to, to wrestle smoothly as if he was 15, 20, even 30 years younger than what he actually is and keep up with the younger guys. Chris Jericho looks like he's definitely aged a shit ton. Especially since joining AEW. I don't know what he did between leaving WWE and joining AEW. But he's just taken a... a a turn for the worst. I mean, even the, the last 
four or five years he's been in AEW, his his in ring work has just dropped. And I'm not the Lung Tree gimmick isn't the worst gimmick I've seen in wrestling. But it's far from the best. I mean at least it's giving him T V time, at least it's giving a uh, Big Bill and Brian Keith T V time. So that's that's something. And now the team of uh, Joe Hook and Catch to Yori Shibata has been odd. That's been great. Uh, Joe's been a mentor to Hook. I, uh, Chris Jericho started off as a trying to be a trying to be a mentor to Hook, but Hook didn't take to it because Jericho was being rather arrogant about the whole thing. So he didn't quite take to, and especially since Jericho put his hands on Taz, who happens to be Hook's father. Uh, yeah, Hook didn't take too kindly to the, all of that. So, and yeah, then Samoa Joe yeah, stepped in to be a mentor to Hook, and they've got they got good chemistry together. And adding in Captain Yuri Shibata has been good. I mean, Sh- having Shibata cut all his promos through the Google app. The uh, the the trans the Google Translate app on on his phone to cut all throws has been has been pretty good. Right? Has been pretty good, and having him uh, use one of the filming cameras to follow uh, Joe and hook around has been pretty good. Uh, having them uh, go into the locker room to try and beat up. Uh, those athletes, uh, Tony Nice and that, the, the premier af- athletes, and try and even the odds with the elite and uh, going after the learning tree has been, this has been some of Hook's best work. Uh, this is, a, this is having some old Joe by the side, someone who, who can kick ass and is smooth in the ring and can cut a decent promo. Has been done wonders for Hook. Uh, cuts and having Shibata there as, as a for the in ring stuff is has it gonna do Hook some wonders. So hopefully he actually does learn from from all of this. Uh, so yeah, that so I I have Joe Hook and Shibata winning, but I I could be wrong. Uh, well, look, I wouldn't be surprised if the Learning Tree won, but yeah, I've got Hook, Joe, and Shibata winning. Uh, and yeah, that's it for this show. Uh, oh, look, I wouldn't be surprised if on this week's uh, Dynamite Rampage and Collision more matches get added. If more matches do get added, I'll put onto the Judd's Podding Around Facebook page. Uh, who I think will win those matches, so keep keep up on that. Uh, before I end this episode today, I just want to say uh, rest in peace to Sika Anawai, who's the father of Roman Reigns uh, and the late Rosie. Uh, Sika passed away recently. Uh... Only a few, a few days, yeah, yesterday, earlier today, he he passed away. Uh, at seventy nine years, at seventy nine years old, surrounded by his family. Uh, uh, Seeker was known for tagging with his brother uh, Afa and Nawati, and Kong Zolsus World Samoans. They ran roughshod in WWE in the in the early eight all through the eighties, uh, and teaming with especially when they had uh, Captain Lou Albano uh, by their side, being their manager, talking for them, trying to keep, keeping them 
as under control as he could. Uh, Seiko was part of the famous Anawaii family. So he was uh, there as he was Roman Reigns' father, Rose, Rosie's father. He was uncle to the Usos and whatnot. So yeah, the wrestling industry wouldn't be what it is today without Seiko. Well, tag team wrestling especially wouldn't be what it is today without uh, Seiko and Afa. So, it's a great loss for the, not only for the wrestling world, but for the Anawai'i Fatu family. Uh, yeah. There's not, nothing I can say will be able to, I, w I won't be able to say anything that will really express how much Seeker means to the wrestling industry. Uh... So, yeah, rest in peace to uh, Seeker. And, yeah, un until... So, yeah, until then. The, the, so I want to end on that note. And make sure you keep up to date with all uh, my... On all my socials. J at JPA Podcast. On Twitter and Insta. Just putting around on Facebook. Bulldozer with you. Bulldozer Williams on YouTube. Uh, yeah, and uh, make sure you go onto my Facebook page to make sure to keep up to date with uh, if there's any more matches announced for the for the Forbidden Door card. I'm sure there will be at least another three or four matches added, especially for the pre-show, or maybe some of these matches will be added as pre-show matches. So, and... Join me next week as I as I look back at this at this show as well as uh, previewing Money in the Bank. So yeah, keep around and until then, have a good one.